Now, when London won the 2012 Olympic bid, an accompanying programme of rather less sweaty events, the so-called Cultural Olympiad, was also announced. As the final preparation... 2012 get underway, I've been talking to Ruth McKenzie, director of the Cultural Olympiad, to find out what we can expect. Just as every country has their own way of staging the Olympics, so every country has their own way of showcasing their culture. And since 1952, a non-competitive festival of arts and culture has been associated with each Games. Since it was announced London would host the 2012 Sporting Olympics, a whopping £97.6 million has been awarded to projects in the Cultural Olympiad, including the London 2012 Festival. The Cultural Olympiad has been going for three years already, and it's only just gearing up for 2012, the climactic year. Uh, and I think it's pretty appropriate, in a way, that they chose the London bus as their symbol, because when you read their publicity, it's pretty clear that what they're setting out to be is a kind of cultural bus service for the nation, crisscrossing not only London but all the regions with a veritable barrage of events ranging from workshops to exhibitions to plays to films. But as a cynic, I would ask whether London in particular needs this vast injection of cultural creativity and what is it exactly that we're getting for a truly remarkably large amount of money? So, Ruth, if I'm brutally honest... Yes. I live in London. Apparently, the Cultural Olympiad's been going on for three years. But I have to say, if I hadn't read all your publicity material, I wouldn't actually have noticed that it had been going on. Do you mean you're not one of the 1.2 million people who came out and danced last year as part of Big Dance? I, I'm, I'm not one of those. I'm shocked and sad to hear that. Well, what I wonder, though, is that because you, you seem to have been doing perhaps so many different things that people like me just haven't realised, haven't put it together, that this is actually part of one event. I think that our big chance is the climax of the Cultural Olympiad, which is the London 2012 Festival. So we're building up to this festival in 2012 all over the UK, and our challenge there is to pull everything together and to show you the best of the Cultural Olympiad and the best in the world. But to play devil's advocate, I mean, isn't Britain already culturally vibrant? Aren't a huge number of these events, such as Lucian Friday at the National Portrait Gallery or David Hockney at the Royal Academy, wouldn't they just take place anyway without the Cultural Olympics? Well, none of the commissions that we've announced would take place anyway without the London 2012 Festival. I mean, the Royal Shakespeare Company and The Globe are both presenting a programme of Shakespeare done by artists from all around the world. We're going to have the Iraqi National Theatre for the first time coming to this country doing their Romeo and Juliet. We're going to have actors from the South Sudan, the newest country in the world, coming to The Globe. I find that immensely moving. Uh, we're going to have more artists from around the world doing Shakespeare, sharing how Shakespeare belongs to them as well as to us. This wouldn't happen in any other year. As well as over a thousand events nationwide, London 2012 will have an Olympic poster campaign with a difference. We've commissioned 12 amazing artists from the UK to make posters for the Paralympics and for the Olympics. And you've got here Howard Hodgkin and Rachel Whiteread and Martin Creed, three of the 12. You say Howard Hodgkin, that's definitely one for the, uh, for the swimming Olympics, no? Well, you can, you can see there that he's been inspired by swimming. I think that's fair. You can see that Rachel has thought about the symbol of the Olympics, the rings, though she also talks rather movingly about how, for her, this is about the memory of social get-togethers. So you, you could think about coffee mugs or glasses. And Martin clearly has thought a little bit about podia. Um, but <laughs> Why not a medal for the person who comes fifth? <laughs> Very good thought. We could start a campaign. Tracy Emin has designed her poster for the Paralympic Games. The Olympics, it's quite difficult to get your head around to do a poster. And, my, and I just kept thinking, what could I do? What could I possibly do? And then when they said, would you like to do the Paralympics? Then I said, yes. I've written, um, you inspire me with your determination and I love you. And then I used the Paralympic adjectives here. I don't actually particularly like the Olympic rings. I find them quite graphically difficult to deal with. So I was really pleased to have um, something which I actually found quite nice to draw. And it's not just the poster that Emin's doing for London 2012. 
I'm doing a solo show next May in Margate, and I come from Margate. I grew up in Margate, so it's a really big deal. It's like the prodigal daughter returns home, and home is your biggest critic, after all. And I'm also showing with, I can do this is very exciting, two other artists, Turner and Rodin. Basically, it's all erotic art. So not everyone knows that Turner met, did a lot of erotic paintings and watercolours, and, and obviously Rodin did, but much more raunchy than people ever. All everyone knows is about the, you know, the kiss, but his other stuff was really hardcore, you know. So I think they'll be uh, bringing that out, and I'll be, I'll, I'll look like some placid, uh, nice young lady, I think, in comparison to them. Prints of the posters by Tracy Emin and the other artists are available to buy on the London 2012 Festival website. But if you don't want to fork out for one, there are plenty of ways you can be culturally involved without spending any money. On July the 27th, 2012, that's the opening day of the Olympic Games, you're going to wake up, we hope, and join with Martin Creed to create his largest ever piece of artwork, which will be bells. You, we're going to ask you to ring bells all round the country. Bicycle bells, church bells, there'll be a download for your phone. So at a particular time, bells. at a particular yes. time of day, Martin his Creed, work of art is, is everybody right. in Britain, if you're awake and alert, ring, right. ring a bell at this time that's on this right. day. That's right. Why do you think it's important that culture should be part of a sports festival. When we've got 20,000 journalists coming from all around the world and millions of tourists and millions more people watching on television all around the world, we wanted to show the creative and cultural world of the UK to its absolute best. You know, they say of London that culture is to London as sun is to Spain. This is actually really important to the economy of this country and to the health and wealth of all of our cultural institutions. So we really need to put on the best show we can. That's all we're trying to do. You do a very good sell, very hard sell. The truth is, yes. actually, that we are much better at culture than we are at sport. Uh, we're going to win many medals in sport and we're going to show that we're gold medal winners in culture. That's okay. That seems to me win-win.